Hello, welcome back to another My 30 Day World Building Challenge, one that has so much more energy than day five. It's day six, and yes, it is December 9th when you are watching this, if you are watching it the day it was released, and yes, that means I'm behind. As you know, if you watched day five, I had a colonoscopy and endoscopy. First of all, everything is fine, so that's good, but that meant I was very low energy, which also included day five that looked like very low energy Jordan it's because I was I had been drinking broth all that day and so I had to edit out things like this from the video this sucks we see uh, I can't do this but we're back and we're excited day six of the world building challenge we are talking about magic today specifically the question for today how prevalent is magic where does it come from? So let's talk about magic in D&D and fantasy world building. I think one of the really interesting things about D&D when you start to think about magic is how much it would impact everything that we know about the world. So for example, there is a spell in D&D that's not that high level called Zone of Truth that makes it so someone cannot tell a lie. They can obfuscate their answers, but they can't openly lie, right? And the person that casts Zone of Truth knows whether or not the person they tried to make tell the truth succeeded in passing their saving throw or not. And how does that not change? Literally everything about the entire legal system, right? Like you could not have wrongful convictions anymore. You would know whether someone was telling the truth. There are also spells that can change people's memories, but those can also be undone by a greater restoration. Now those are really expensive to cast, but you know, you would be able to avoid so many weird legal pitfalls that exist in the real world by simply having magic. And Arjat is no different. It is a high fantasy, high magic campaign. People use magic here, right? It is used when investigating potential crimes. It is used in all sorts of scenarios. There are magic shops, magic items, magic weapons, all the kind of stuff that you would expect in a big city readily available to adventurers, which exist within this world. So how prevalent is magic? vary. It is used by a lot of folks. A lot of folks use it for good. Some folks use it for bad. The government regulates magic use as best they can. There is a safety net that is magic is part of to make sure that people aren't wrongfully convicted, all those kinds of things. And obviously what that means is that our adventurers in the setting aren't unique in their magic use, right? There are other people who use magic. So what should set our adventurers apart, right, is that they level up beyond what an average magic user in this world would be. Sure, they're probably like archmages of the city that can cast really high level spells, but they're incredibly rare, right? We're talking about the elite of the elite of the elite that would be able to do the magic that our adventurers will be able to do at some point. And it's a 5e setting, so magic is available in the way that magic is available in D&D, right? Bards have the ability to use song or music to literally cast spells. Clerics, paladins gain magic from the divine. Druids tap into nature and are able to use magic that way. Wizards learn through books and studying. Sorcerers have it baked into their blood. Warlocks have made packs with otherworldly entities. It's all the typical magic ways that come into existence. So Arjat has day-to-day -day magic use that impacts people's lives, and that changes how things operate. That's day six, magic. Tomorrow, day seven, we're going to talk about the prevalence of adventurers in our world. Is, are your players the only people that exist that are running these adventures? Let's talk about it. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. I'm loving making these. I'm loving world building. I hope you're enjoying watching them.